Hello everyone. Welcome to Nesso Academy. In this lecture, we will understand functions in C++. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic is introduction to functions. First, I will introduce you to functions. Then, we will understand how to define a function, call a function and declare a function. So, these are all the topics. Let's start with the first one, introduction to functions. So, what is a function? A function is a reusable block of code that performs a specific task. So, think of a function as a block of code which you can reuse as many times as you want and it has the capability to perform some task on its own. So, we can imagine a function as a machine which can accept inputs, it can operate on those inputs and then it produces an output. Let's take an example to properly understand this. Let us assume we want to add two numbers. For this purpose, we can define a function add like this. This add function can receive inputs. The two inputs we pass to this function, let's say R, 20 and 50. This function will operate on these inputs and then it produces the output 70. We are getting 70 because 20 plus 50 is 70. So, with this we have understood what a function is. Now, let's see what are the different types of functions we have in C++. We have two types of functions. We have predefined functions and user defined functions. Predefined functions are those functions which are already defined for us. We do not have to define them. This means we do not have to write code for them. We can directly use those functions in our code if we want. Let's say we want to calculate square root of a number. We already have the function for the same. The function name is sqrt. Similarly, if we want to calculate x power y, we have the function for the same, which is called pow. To this function, we can pass the inputs x and y. If we want to know whether a specific character is an alphabet or not, we have the function, which is called is alpha, to do this job. If we want to know what's the length of the string, then we have the function strlen to calculate the length of the string. So, these are all the predefined functions. These functions are already defined for us. We can directly use these functions in our code. But what if we want to define our own functions? We may want to do this because we do not have any predefined function for the job that we want to do. In this case, obviously, we want to define our own functions. And we can do that. These type of functions are called user defined functions as the name itself suggests these functions are called user defined this means these functions are defined by the user or programmer the focus of this lecture is to understand how to define our own functions and how to use them whenever we want to so in this lecture in the subsequent topics we will properly understand how to define our own functions and how to use them. So, with this, we are done with the introduction to functions. Now, let's move to the second topic to understand how to define a function. Let's first understand the meaning of defining a function. Defining a function is same as writing the code for the function that specifies how the function performs its task. So, when we define a function, we write the code for that function which is responsible to perform the task on behalf of the function. Now, here is the syntax of defining a function in C++. We need to specify the return type first. This return type represents the type of the output returned by the function. Then we need to provide the name of the function. Then within parentheses, we can provide the parameters which are the inputs to the function. We can provide as many parameters as we want. And then within braces, we define the function body. 
function body represents the code which is responsible to perform the task on behalf of the function. I hope this syntax is clear to you. Now, let's implement this syntax. Let's understand how to implement this behavior in C++ programs. Let's define a function add. Here is the definition of the function add. Name of the function is add. Return type is int. This means this function will return an integer output. The parameters are also integer parameters. Here we have a and b. And here is the body of this function. We have return a plus b. This function has the capability to add a and b and then return the result so obtained. So that's the function definition in C++. Here we have defined the add function. So with this we have understood how to define a function. But defining a function is not enough. If we have a program and if we define a function, then it is not enough because the function will not execute on its own. We need to call the function to execute it. And this is exactly what we will learn in the next topic. For now, we are done with defining a function. Now, let's understand how to call a function. Calling a function means asking the function to execute its task. So, when we call a function, we ask the function to simply execute. And we can call a function from the main function or from some other function. That is what I have written here. A function can be called from the main function or some other function. Here is the syntax to call a function. We need to specify the name of the function first. Then within parentheses, we can provide the arguments based on the parameters we have defined. So the number of arguments must match with the number of parameters we have defined for the function. At the end, we need to put the semicolon. So when we call the function, we do not specify the return type. We simply write the name of the function and within parentheses, we provide the arguments. These arguments are the actual values we pass to the function. Now, let's consider the add function and let's call that function. For this purpose, let's write the program. Here is the complete program. I have included the iostream header file and here is the definition of the add function. After this definition, we have the definition of the main function. And inside this main function, I have written this stdc outline. And here, I am calling the add function. You can compare this call with the syntax. Here, I have specified the name of the function. Then within parentheses, I have provided the actual values, which are the arguments. These arguments will be passed to these parameters. When we call a function, the control shifts to the definition of the function. So from the main function, now we move to the definition of this add function. These parameters a and b will receive values 3 and 4 respectively. This means variable a will receive 3 and variable b will receive 4. Now we know this add function will add these numbers. We will get 7. And this value will be returned to the caller only. So that's the meaning of the statement. Return A plus B means return the result of A plus B to the caller of the function add. This means this caller will receive value 7. So here in place of add 3, 4, 7 will be available. This will be available at runtime. So when we execute this program, we know we will get the output 7. I hope this is clear to you. So in this way, we can call a function. When we call a function, we will be able to execute that function. Without executing a function, a function is of no use. Now here, you can observe one thing. I have defined this function before this main function. And this is important to do because 
whenever we call a function, its definition must be available before it. That is why I have defined this function before the main function. But what if we want to define this function after this main function? This can be the requirement. Maybe we want that the main function should be available at the top of the program always. Then we need to define this function after the main function. Now if we shift this function after the main function, then we will get error from the compiler. This is because compiler reads the code from top to bottom. It has to see the definition of the function first before calling the function. Therefore, writing this code is correct and we cannot shift this function after the main function like this. If we want to shift this function after the main function, then we need to declare this function before calling the function. This is exactly what we will learn in the next topic. For now, we are done with calling a function. This means we are done with this topic. Now, let's move to the fourth topic, which is about declaring a function. Declaring a function means telling the compiler about the name, return type, and types of parameters of the function. So, when we declare a function, we inform the compiler about the name of the function, the return type of the function, and the types of parameters of the function. So, we can say that it allows us to define a function after it is called. When we declare a function, we would be able to define the function after it is called. This is the importance of declaring a function. Now, here is the syntax to declare a function. We need to specify the return type first, then the name of the function. And within parentheses, we need to provide the parameters of the function. And at the end, the semicolon will come, not the braces. That's the difference between declaration and definition. In case of definition, we always have braces and within braces, we provide the code of the function because we want to define the function. But when we declare the function, we end the statement with semicolon. We do not add braces. So that's the declaration. We just tell the compiler about the name of the function, the return type of the function, and also the types of the parameters of the function. Now let's take the same example program to understand how to declare the function. Here is the example program we took in the last topic. Here we have the definition of the add function, which is available before calling the function. Now, let's say we want to define this function after the main function. As I have mentioned this already, we cannot do this now. If we do this, we will get error from the compiler. But if we want to really shift this function to the bottom most place of this program, then we need to declare this function before calling this function like this. Here I have declared the add function with these parameters and this return type. At the end, we have the semicolon. The semicolon is telling us that this is the declaration, not the definition. Now, here you can observe this declaration is available before calling the function. So, it is perfectly valid. And here you can observe the definition of the add function is available after the main function. Now, there is no problem. We will get the output 7 as expected. With this declaration, we are telling the compiler that the definition of this function is available somewhere in the code. Don't worry at all if I call the function. Now, I would like to mention that we do not have to specify the name of the parameters here. This is not mandatory because compiler has to do nothing with these names. Compiler is only interested in the types of the parameters. Therefore, we can remove these names and this is how our declaration looks like. This is also the valid declaration. Now, when we execute this program, we will get the same output, 7. 
So with this, we have properly understood the significance of declaring a function. This means we are done with the last topic also and we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.